Oh yeah. 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 And that and the and the concept of the technology group was having a, a the online portal portal with help desk ticketing and you know there would be help desk staff that could answer certain questions. There would be remote access. There would be um, access within a building. Um, you know if you needed to come out for something to come out for a site visit. So there was redundancy in there. So that's the model that they put out for technology and then how it fits within these two governance models, that's gonna be that next question that we're gonna delve into a little bit in July. So theoretically both are possible within those models. Um, Model W would have to have more collaborative formal agreements or informal agreements. Model Y builds a little bit more of that structure into that statewide technology and so. the hope is for everybody to stay at least where they're at or get better. Like we, you know, the hope is the plan isn't for any library system or any libraries to have a reduction in their in their services. So, so I, I maybe you're going to cover this a little later. So I'm hearing great right, that we're looking at potentially like expanded state services, hope potentially expanded services within the systems depending which model. But at the same time, we're addressing that both libraries and the DPI are underfunded. Right. So how do you mm -hmm. expand services using the same funding model that we do now? So if, if so if you if you're using the same funding model that you have now, the only way to the, the biggest way to do that is to increase the funding that goes into that model. Model Y would reduce some of the overhead that exists with 16 systems. There are 16 library system buildings, whether they're in a library, renting a space, or owning a space. There are currently 16 library system directors. There are not quite 16 business managers because not everybody has a business manager, right. but they're paying for some sort of fiscal arrangement, whether they um, have the, the county doing it, whether they, they rely more job. on mm -hmm. um, an auditor or accountant firm to do their work. One system is contracting with another system to do their bookkeeping. So there, there's that piece. So it'd be so many um, copies of scale you would hope. And then, you know, if you reduce the number of network server rooms, that would save some technology space, some technology dollars, depending on how the systems are set up. So there's that part of it. Um, there are some dollars right now that we're spending for some statewide delivery stuff that mm -hmm. while it's going to the 16 systems, it's also because they're piggybacking with the UW system, that system is also going to each one of the UW campuses. So in the regions where they're, they have their own delivery network, their de delivery van as well as the statewide delivery van are both going to the same cities. So there's, a, there's an overhead there. And then, in, in, you know, in ILSs too, you know, generally, if it's a larger your area, the better deal you get from some. So there would be some savings in that. And we haven't totally gotten, I mean, we haven't gotten to the nitty gritty of a lot of that, but that's, um, is that in the, because if you're planning, if the plan is to make a recommendation by the end of summer, is there a timeline on having an idea as to either a cost savings or cost increase that one of those two models will be? Before that recommendation is made, there will be. There's not. There's not a, an absolute way to get an exact amount. So, for example, if you, if we were to go to Model Y, we don't know what necessarily what that configuration is going to look like. So, where systems might merge, you know what. Where would that building be? We're not we're not 
we're not going to get into that level of saying this system has to merge with this system or this group needs to merge with that. There and there there are a couple of ILS merger conversations going on now that won't be done by the time this report's done. It's likely going to sort of have a, a like a rollout, you know, not not like a tomorrow we're yeah. doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there this there will be some yeah. ability to um, you know tweak and adjust mm -hmm. as as it moves forward. Yeah. So there'll be some. The, the funding subcommittee did kind of do a report of where the system dollars are being spent now. So you can look at that a little bit and make some assumptions about, okay, some of this we would be saving. We could move it to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, but we probably won't have the tech dollars on it. It's the, the fiscal impact of, of a lot of this is actually in the implementation piece of it, which actually falls into whatever legislative work the DPI might need to do to do some of that. So they'll be actually doing more of the detailed physical impact on some of this. <clears throat> and again, this model also calls for some sort of standards for library service services for library systems, um, statewide services. Um, baseline for electronic resources and then um, regional system boards would you know obviously be representation from the region um, right now system boards are can price strictly of citizen members there has been some discussion of maybe one of the options is to add library staff as part of that to help with the, the accountability um, and then there would be regional staff and then there would be a layer some of the statewide staff so their the consultant model has um, statewide data consultants so that would be staff available to help libraries within regions to do data work so it might be that there are three smaller systems that are part of a bigger region for a data person or there might be six regions that would be part of the facility itself. So those layers would kind of would be an over would be an overlay to the, the six state region. Yeah, when you uh, refer to the uh, regional hubs, is that the uh, same terminology as what as what we use for our resource? library no. no so the, re the regional hub would be so the material would go from this is based on delivery. So for delivery so it would be from La Crosse to Wausau Madison to Wausau um, you know Madison to Milwaukee those there would be those specific yeah. hubs where they would drop off the material to be delivered and then that would be done within a local yeah, the, res the hubs are, are, are sort of are a little nebulous right now because it's hard to know. They're based off the delivery um, work group report, which shows right now the delivery is in the state is set up so that um, there are there are places where the you know a book will will come to us and then have to go to Madison before it comes back up to someplace closer to us. So we're just looking at a delivery system that's a little bit more um, centralized. So things go from hub to hub rather than, you know, down to Madison and all the way back up. And the delivery group specified eight delivery hubs where it makes more, more it makes the most sense for the physical books to transfer. Um, so we've sort of been using those as a guideline, but it's hard, it's hard to know right now whether that will be where the um, where the system office will be as well or or not you know so yeah but it's different than a resource library um, resource libraries are still in the um, in the plan both of them right they're still in yeah so resource libraries still there still is the resource library agreement where the resource library you know agrees to be the the reference center and to provide um, services to the smaller libraries. So if there if there were some mergers, it's possible, uh, it's certain that you would have 
than two existing resource libraries in that new system, correct? That could happen, yeah, and then you'd have to, that would be something that would have to be, be dealt with if, you know, if, sure, if like um, Nicolay and, um, Statute uh, doesn't deter our systems from having more than one, you need to have at oh, least one. Oh, you okay. must yeah. have so one. Could, yeah. you could, or you could, or you could have them fight it out now on the research library. Yeah, so, so the, the, the original work group model for resource libraries really looked at having a statewide resource library, heritage library, and then didn't define specifically what happened to the rest of the large libraries in system areas. Each one of the 16-ish resource libraries have different functions within each of their systems. Some receive money for providing cataloging support or reference support. Um, others have staff that they share with their system. Others really are... Continuing education support. Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. They may just be focused on building up a specialized collection for the system area. All of those things can continue. Statute allows libraries and systems to contract with any other system and or other library to provide services. So that exists now, um, and there isn't any vision to take that out of statute because that does allow that flexibility to exist. So that's where some of the, the shared um, ILS systems, two systems have contracted with each other to manage an ILS. Mm -hmm. So each of the models kind of had a sense of what the work group recommendations would fit into their model, but none of them got real specific. That begins happening in July. So these are kind of some of the questions if you go into the comment form that you're going to see. You know, what are the strengths and upsides of the model? Um, really looking at both models, challenges and downsides of the model, unique contributions and approach of the model. Is there something really unique about it? The design principles that the steering committee developed, they're asking the group, do they fully, partially, or not satisfy those models? That's built as a matrix within the comment form, so you don't have to go out and find what those principles are. They're right there, and you just click one, one of the three that fits. Does it create winners and losers? So if we just, one, one option was, well, let's just change the funding formula and redistribute the $16 million that we have. That was talked about a while ago people have brought up, well, if we take that $16 million and redistribute it, somebody's going to get more money. Somebody's going to lose money. So this system gets help, this one gets hurt. So we really haven't solved the fundamental problem, we just moved it from one to another. What suggestions do you have to improve the model? Anything that you need answers to that might help you? with that model. Some of those answers we might know right away. Some of them we may have to say, we're gonna to need to do more research, or we're not even gonna be able to do that within the time frame. This is something that when we hand it off to the state superintendent, that's the next layer that may need to answer that question. So we have the feedback period. Um, all that information is gonna get shared with the summit participants. The summit participants are the 10 members of the steering committee, the 10 members of the CRC, the how many DPI staff that show up, plus 45 individuals that um, agreed to be part of this. Again, those 45 additional voices, again, represent different types of um, 
size libraries, different types of system sizes, and we have some academic folks, we have some board um, members, we have some, we, um, we have a system, a former system director in Wisconsin and now works in Minnesota as part of the group, so we do have a diverse group of people that are part of that. Everything is on the plsr.info page and all the other standard places that you can continue to ask questions or share feedback. Any more questions, comments, <laughs> thoughts? This seems to me to be all high in the sky until you put numbers to it. The, the legislature is not going to make changes based on, we think this will be good, we think this will be fairer. They want to know what the bottom line is. And I just don't see how you can go forward without attaching numbers we, to these two plans. We are working, that is going to be one of the things that we are going to put some budget numbers at least. We're not necessarily going to be able to drill down to the exact amount. Part of this is um, September 1st, we're not turning the light switch on and say, poof, everything's different. Some of this is going to take time. Right. Some of this may take five years. To you know, convince the legislature well, to well, make even, changes, yes. Well, even to implement something. So yeah. mm -hmm. if, if we were to, let's say, implement the technology model, we can't build this technology infrastructure separate of everybody maintaining their current technology. Because we can't just say, oh, by the way, you're not going to have internet, email, right. an ILS for six months while we build this. <laughs> that, that's impossible. So we're going to have to build parallel things and you know, build and maintain. And, hop, and building with maybe different staff or, or others so that these things don't fall apart <laughs> while we're building. So it's going to take some time. So like even the delivery mm -hmm. um, recommendation, they're looking at piloting something in the southeastern part of the state because Cher has added Kenosha and Arrowhead to their ILS. That's created a whole new delivery infrastructure for that region. That's Lake Shores. Lake Shores, yeah. yeah. Bottom portions. And then there's also a recommendation to, to do the Northwest. So, and which is the one system that I'm in. Right now, we, two of us use Walco for a service delivery provider. So they have a hub in Wausau and in Chippewa Falls. Right now, they send stuff back and forth. Um, and then we've, we've worked out an arrangement where Walco drops stuff off for Northern Waters and it comes back. So part of that's there, but right now, the statewide delivery goes to Eau Claire, Wausau, and then they subcontract to go up to Superior. The hub would just say, okay, we're gonna drop it to Wausau. It will be there Monday morning. By Monday evening, it should be into our hub, and, and in some cases, out the door mm -hmm. that same day, depending on the timing of all of that. So. Instead of, you know, mm -hmm. before, for a while, we used to get stuff from Northern Waters that went from Northern Waters to Madison back to us. Mm -hmm. And libraries were 30 miles apart. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's so. sort of a, it's sort of like a more, I always, it looked at like more of a plan, more of like, where, like, where do we want to get to? And right. then, and then we'll have to, you know, figure out how to get there because of course, um, you know, we we have like in the in the sixteen systems right now. We have all the experts in the industry. So you know, you'll we'll use those people to kind of get us to where we where we want to go. But it's good to have a it's good to have that de a, you know a view of that destination. So you can say, you know, here's where we want to end up, and then and then take the steps to get there. Yeah. Change costs money. Yeah, it costs money and it takes time. It takes work. It you takes know, it's time. yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah. But you want to be organized about the way you go forward in the in the change. So, and you want to have a you know a goal in mind to get to. So. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
my question is really, um, we certainly are, I'm certainly interested in having um, equity of access to services that are more consistent across the state. But um, I'm also, as a board member and a library user, I'm particularly interested in the impact on morale on the ground level. And um, I know that's really hard to predict, but I, I know that when there are um, bureaucratic changes and greater mm -hmm. level of centralization, when it comes down to the people who are working in the library, that can be a terrible situation for them when they no longer feel as free to do their jobs and that they're, they have to check with somebody way up on the top to, um, to do something that's logical. And I'm just wondering if you have any ideas about the, how the models would yeah. impact that. I think that's super important. I mean, I think that and we've talked a lot about that with local control as opposed to, um, you know, in Model Y, if you just look at the structure of the model, it can seem like these statewide services might be, um, oh, another layer of bureaucracy or, but the hope is that some of those things um, can be sort of separated out to allow the people um, on the ground level doing the work to do their work more freely without having to think like, oh my gosh, I have to be an expert on um, building modifications for libraries or I have to be an expert on um, library law you know they don't they can do the job that they need to do and know that they have the resources for some of those things so the point isn't um, and that, that that's a particular uh, it's a good point to bring up because that, that is a strong point for a lot of librarians they you know they want to maintain that local control and I think that's important and I also think the transition we've talked a lot about the transition phase of this because Whenever you make changes, it's really scary, and it, you know you're dealing with people's um, their their lives, their their livelihood, and their day to day life. So we've talked about that too, of having a you know making sure we have a well laid out transition plan and communicating it well. So, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, through the process and the 16 systems and looking at what is and where you want it to go and you don't want anybody to get less and to, to trying to take the best of each piece of it. Um, have there, as you've gone through this process, have you found any of these best pieces that can be expanded for statewide usage or is it really have to be but for instance, you're talking on the technology. I mean, is there anything that, you know, hey, this one system has something in place that we could really just roll up for the whole state? Well, <coughs> sometimes. It's not as detailed. Because <coughs> you're really down too far. No, it, it, some, sometimes it depends on who we ask. Oh. Um, <laughs> to be honest. So, one example would be. The, the technology infrastructure. Um, right now, South Central has a, a really robust technology support system in place. They have multiple technicians, um, staff redundancy in many areas, help, dedicated help desk staff that just does help desk versus going out and doing technology support in a library. Um, their network, technology network, they share a, a vast majority of that cost with the member libraries. Um, our system has partnered with Wisconsin Valley and right now we're sharing a help desk ticketing system. So their tech staff and our tech staff see the same help desk tickets from both systems. We have one set of virtualized servers for both systems. Both have separate ILS systems, but those servers are both housed in the same facility. That building is part of the Chippewa Valley um, Tech School. So they have a specific data center that they share out space with a whole bunch of people in, in the region. So it's county, city, hospitals, whatever. They've got redundant fiber going in. They've designed the building so the wind should blow over it and not through it. Um, backup generation, all of those kinds of things. 
the two of us are also hosting Northern Waters Iowa server. So in essence, we have three Iowa servers in one building. So we have a, on a small scale, a data center for that northwestern part of the state. The in-building technology, the routers and that kind of stuff have been purchased so that they're the same model. So in essence, we could support a library regardless of where we're at. Virtually, we can go in and, and go into their network and, and do all of that kind of stuff. So that does exist. Um, so either one of them, I think, can be scaled. There's different dollars associated with that. And I think that's a concern for us. Um, going forward, and being able to provide thoughtful feedback because we don't have a lot of those fees associated with the services that we do provide. And that could be bring, and bringing up our services to where whatever is, whatever is created might create a, a budget problem for our library. Yep. I mean, of mm -hmm. course, if it's successful, they'll get more services, but they also might not Right. So one of the design principles is minimize any negative fiscal impact on libraries as much as possible. So that is one of the core things we're evaluating when we make decisions. Because I, you know, I certainly don't want to create something that's going to say, oh, by the way, you get this now for 500 bucks, all oh, this new model is going to be you know, $10,000. <laughs> that that does you know, right. where's the money come from? It's not there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you just go over those design principles, please? I know there are Sure. Um, proactively foster, build, and maintain trust through the library community in Wisconsin. Allow for innovation and for services to evolve. Include transparency in decision making. Ensure accountability to the public library community. Achieve efficiencies relative to cost and service. Protect public libraries' willingness to explore new service models and to enter into large-scale collaborations. Minimize any negative fiscal impact on libraries as much as possible. Response to local public library needs. Preserve or improve the level of services currently provided by systems. Services will not be de decreased for some in order to improve services for others. And then the equity statement as part of it too is ensure all Wisconsin public libraries have the capacity to provide equitable access to excellent library services regardless of the race, ethnicity, income, gender, or employment centers of the people they serve or their location within the state. So if you happen to be on one far end of the state, you should be able to have access to it. I just want to speak to your question a little bit too. There, you know, the um, through the process of PLSR, they have done a number of surveys and looked at what the library systems are doing, and there there is a lot that um, library systems are doing really, really well. So I don't I don't think that um, you know I don't think it's a situation where anyone's thinking that we need to level everything and start from start from scratch. You know, that just doesn't make sense. So you know, I think that there are there are areas. That are in the employee we looked at you know we like, looked with my member libraries at what they thought they actually needed which was more on the marketing end of things and we um, uh, entered into a collaboration with other library systems in regard to continuing education and one of the systems had somebody full-time doing continuing education who said oh I could I could take it on for another library system and um, if you could hire somebody that could provide me with 10 hours a week you know, of work. So we're hiring a new position that includes 10 hours of continuing education and then 30 hours of you know, what my library directors want, which is more help with communications and marketing. So that person who was working in that library system without much more um, Without much, without much more, without needing to hire, she's going to do continuing education for a number of systems um, with a little bit of help instead of me having to hire a full-time person. So there are areas like that where systems can can 
you know, work together to to save themselves money and not and not duplicate the the um, the procedure, or duplicate the the job position. So I think there's lots of things that systems are, are doing well that we can um, we can we can utilize and, and see how that fits in. So. You showed up there what they call disincentives, in other words, to get certain systems to merge or become larger than they are. Is that in both models and you want to talk about it? So the disincentives was a statement that was in model W. Basically it would say, well if you're smaller or whatever, there would be disincentive of some sort. That wasn't really explaining what that would be. The flip side of that is creating incentives to become bigger. So there, I think, um, yeah, I was just going to look at No less than two pounds, or have you at least two pounds? If you're looking at the... No, yeah, why does, yeah, yeah, W had 15, 15 libraries or less. One of the other models had a certain number of counties. Um, so, like, some of the things in, in Y mentioned making it easier for um, systems to merge with one another. Um, looking at implementation timelines, creating an easier way for counties to realign. Um, so it, it was more of a way to make it easier for some of that to happen. Um, and, and then the incentives to merge systems and ILSs. So, you know, maybe there's, whenever you merge something, there's costs involved. So if you go from migration from one ILS to another, there's costs. So mm -hmm. do you help offset that cost as an incentive to make it happen? The state has, has done that over the years. There were, have been various incentive plans for um, libraries to join shared ILSs that weren't. There were examples of trying to merge ILSs as part of some LSTA grants, probably you know, eight, 10 years ago. So that they've been done. Um, so, you know, there's ways of doing that. I guess from my perspective, I'd rather incentivize the youth. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, I belong, I work for one of the largest systems, and then now I work for the smallest. And I would say we're far more efficient in MCLS than the larger one. There's less layers, there's more hands on, and yes, marching birds from home a lot at times, but I also know among the six of us, we help each other. And, you know, yeah, we don't have everything. We don't have Hoopla, but frankly, Hoopla costs too much. And it does not deliver 